Let's take a look at the Aldi angle grinder and this is interesting because it's the 40 volt version and this battery pack that they sell is suitable for 20 volt and 40 volt devices and if you look at the five connections at the end you've got one marked T and ID actually there's two stack terminals there uh, and it's got B1 uh, minus B2 minus and B1 plus and B2 plus so it's basically treating it as two separate 20 volt batteries inside this one pack when I plug it in and this is where there's going to be some noise, but I won't do too much noise because I can't really do it here. I'd like to demonstrate this angle grinding, but it's not practical where I am at the moment. If I push the trigger in here, it's got a little slide up thing here. Uh, let me just push it in at the bottom and then you push it up. It starts ramping up. It doesn't, doesn't go right up to full. Now, I'll take it off camera for this just because it's quite noisy. So... What you heard there was it just basically making the usual rattly noise that these things tend to make, uh, but it ramped up slowly. That suggests, well, there is electronic circuitry in here. So let's unclip the battery first, and we'll pop it open. The battery has a little battery indicator in the end. It's got two yellow LEDs, and then it, this thing pops out the loud click after a while. There it goes. It kind of is a bit strange. Let's start taking this to bits. So I'm going to take the... This is the lock button here. This is the disc that holds your disc in, and then once you've removed that, this lifts off. This, which can click into various positions, should come out if I remove this Jesus clip from here. So called because it usually goes Jesus and it flies across the room. Uh oh. And I'm going to guess there's ball bearings and springs involved here. There are ball bearings and springs involved here. Oh, they're punched in though, so they can't escape. Right, okay, that's useful. So that's going to make this a bit smaller for our exploration. Let's see if I can get grease all over the bench. Well, even more grease all over the bench. So the first thing I'm taking apart here is I'm taking these screws out because this looks like an electronic access compartment, which is going to give access to, well, the electronics. I'm going to guess the motor's probably occupying this area. All the stuff that deals with the battery in there. Well, we'll find out and open it. So that's those screws out. I shall swap to a thinner driver for these ones. I should have got a 20 volt tool as well. Because I want to see if it does actually try to wire the batteries in parallel. Or, um, which I'd expect it to do, but you couldn't just bang them in parallel in case they're out of balance. Don't know how these things... Uh, maybe I shall buy one of those tools. So this is coming off. Revealing... Revealing a micro switch. Oh, right, that comes off as well. So uh, since I'm taking this to bits, and I kind of want to see what... There's the MOSFET that is controlling this. That is dealing with the ramping. Is this a little 8-pin microcontroller, perhaps? Or is it a dedicated chip? They've covered it in something that feels almost like a hard, dry silicone. It's not as usual, as sticky as the usual stuff. Uh, right, tell me what, I'm interested in this circuit board. I'm interested in this, keeping this whole base off here. I wonder if this is a universal bit that goes on to others. Right, tell you what, tell you what. Where is a pair of snips? There is a pair of snips. Let's snip. I shall snip it in a way that it could go back together, if needs be. Well, that's very manageable. And there's also a little uh, com mode suppression choke, a crude one, a filter down here, leading to the motor. Interesting. Literally just about seven turns around a core. Not much to see here. There's the feed out to the motor, and there is a, a freewheel diode across it to protect the MOSFET against damage. Hmm, interesting. This is worthy of exploration. Right. Out of the way goes that. What have we got here? We have... Let's take the gearbox off. Let's switch back to the big screws again. Actually, I may have to take this one off first. I will take the front off it. Right, okay. Big screwdriver. It's not going to be up to the same class as Ave's Bolter teardowns. Besides, his are uh, Board of Lame 2 reviews. This is actually... Uh, well, it cost me a tenner. 
And you think, well, that seems cheap. But in the shop, it had said been reduced to uh, £20, nineteen ninety nine, But it went through as £9.99. That's nice. I like it when it does that way. I don't like it when it goes through the other way. And you end up being charged more. And that makes us a perfect candidate for being stripped apart to uh, explore the circuitry. If I take that module over there, the electronic module, back to my normal bench, uh, it will just be easier to do a more detailed analysis of it and compare it to what's in the battery and what's in the charger. Right, OK, so here's the first bits coming off. Uh, big, well, I mean, it's really not much. Is there any other gearing in here? Quite a lot of grease that is going to make a mess. Uh, there is uh, the first bit. It's the... Right angle drive thingy cogwheel thing. The, Dave can fill in the details. He, he knows what that is. There's probably a name for it, the right angle drive. You guys probably know what the name of the right angle drive is, but right now that is escaping me as often happens under the pressure of making a video. I shall try and stay in shot. That would be quite helpful, wouldn't it? Am I even recording? Yes, I am. This is good. Currently at 6 minutes and 16 seconds. That's not bad to be so far into it by that time. I'll try not to waffle too much because, you know, that just does eat time. So now we're going into motor territory. So when I take this off, what are we going to see? Are we going to see further viewing or is it pretty much direct drive? I can see a fan. Oh, I can see a big fat motor. Any other gearing? This magnet here is just like not even wanted to come off. Ugh. It's off. Uh, there is the uh, rotor with its. Uh, it's a. It's not a brushless. There's the bearing, and then there's the split ring commutator. Well, actually, it's not a split ring. Co is it split ring commutator? Uh, it's a commutator. I'm trying to think, no, it's the, it is split ring commutator as opposed to the two concentric ring, which was I was thinking of, which this isn't, which doesn't even make sense. Uh, why is this not coming out? Why is this not coming out? It has been locked in with something. There's a little plastic curl. There's a fan. So this is actually, there's not much to see anyway. It is direct drive. I'm guessing that this other little Jesus clip in here, if that was removed, then the bearing would pop off the end there, and then the shaft would come out. <laughs> shaft. Uh, right, so there's not really much to be gained from that. I mean, that's ultimately it. It's a motor with a direct drive onto the side of this that then drives onto the uh, the disc. So not hugely complicated. This is all the gearing you're getting. Slabbered with grease. What's this button? This button is pushing that little pin in, and that little pin that locks the disc is going into one of these four indents. That's it. It's really very, very simple inside. Why is this superfluous? It doesn't look like neodymium arm boron magnets. It looks like standard ferrite ones, but it is extremely powerful to get off that. Hold on. I'm going to touch it with my... No, it doesn't feel that powerful. I think it's just the sheer size of it. It's a very basic motor. But that is it. I don't think there's much more to say about this. It's a motor. The exciting bit is what's on the circuit board, and this has to be analysed more, and that will be happening in a different video where I can actually get more into it in greater detail. I don't even think that uh, removing the screw is going to help, because I think these contacts may be moulded in. I shall remove that screw, though, just, uh, just in case. With the wrong size of screwdriver, but that's never stopped me before. I wonder if this is actually placed in, yeah, and then it's soldered on. So these are going to have to be desoldered to take this out, I think. I don't want to, the only thing I can grip it here is with the MOSFET, and that's not really a great idea. Or it could have been an IGBT, for all I know. I think it's going to be a MOSFET, though. But that's it. That is what is inside your very affordable 40 volt. Um, lithium-powered angle grinder from Aldi. Um, interesting, well worth opening, well worth exploring, and uh, I, in, I'm going to take the electronics apart. I'm going to analyse this more in another video, but this was purely the mechanical aspect.